brilliant success! It's just as the Gaia manuscripts foretold! The entity that was sealed within the planet has awakened! Now I just need to harness its power! Eggman Land will finally come to be! <laughs> and come to be it did. The classic Sonic antagonist Dr. Eggman has been working on this masterpiece for generations. And finally, within Sonic Unleashed, the game and story that was made was the thought of it being the last. He has finally accomplished his dream and constructed Eggman Land. Eggman Land is the first and main city of Eggman's future empire that has been mentioned pretty much since the first game's manual. In certain cases, at least in English, it's even been called Robotnik Land. With all seven emeralds in him, he'll be invincible and work for me! Together, we'll destroy Station Square, and on its ruins, I'll build Robotnik Land, the ultimate city, where I will rule it all! You likely noticed that this account is quite similar to Eggman's plans with Dark Isle. Throughout the game, Sonic and Chip have been trying to collect the Chaos Emeralds in order to deal with Eggman and Dark Isle's forces, as well as bring Chip's memories back to him. Particularly that of being like Gaia the opposite to the powerful threat against them. And after collecting six Chaos Emeralds, Sonic, Chip, and Tails head out on the tornado towards the infamous Eggman land built upon the final Gaia Temple. It's the last main level of the game before the final confrontation was Eggman himself and Dark Gaia, but who cares about that guy? The Doctor has always had this vibrant aesthetic to him. His many creations all have this personal flair that perfectly screams Eggman. And this beautiful land is of course no different. Eggman Land takes a lot of inspiration from Carnival, hence that fan name Crimson Carnival. But the bridge leading to the hub area for Eggman Land is probably the most serious part of it. Speaking of the hub area, it's also quite small. And instead of having humans to fill the area, it's just filled with Eggman's robots. You know, the kind you've blasted through throughout the entire game. Well, besides the hot dog stand salesman. Eggman Land's primary color scheme is red, orange, and pink alongside a lot of green lighting. Very in your face, just like a lot of the smiling face designs you'll see throughout the level as it tries to kill Sonic. The level takes place inside and outside during daytime and nighttime, given the main gimmick of Sonic Unleashed. Alongside its carnival and colorful aesthetic, especially in the early outer areas, it's also very industrial and factory-like. Pistons and cogs are out in the open, Sonic runs on pipes and conveyor belts, steam is apparent within the major factory as is some of them. There's also a lot of security of course, like laser gates, spikes, and razor fans within the air vents. It's all quite stunning to view while playing, and in a more static fashion. What? Whoa, this place is crazy. I'll never understand Eggman's tastes. But get a good shot. <laughs> Surprise? Yes, of course you are! Sonic! If you have any complaints, come deliver them to me in person. If you can, that is. <laughs> oh, he's enjoying this way too much. Sonic! I can feel the last temple nearby. He must have built this place on top of it. Well, I guess we'll just have to tear it down. Sonic Unleashed, while also being the first 3D boost game, is known for being one of the harder games in the series. But this level is something else. It's brutal. So brutal that the level will give you an extra life before certain sections? That can honestly be a bit scuffed. This level is a bit of a dick. 
but I honestly love it that way. It makes sense in context for me being the last love the Eggman Land at all. It all starts at the entrance. Immediately being forced to deal with laser hazards and enemies with rockets blasting in a tightly squeezed room raises this tension that will remain constant throughout the level. Furthermore, the level itself is just mechanically very engaging. You shift into the outside through a quick time booster that gives you a large view of the city before quickly landing on the ground. After almost getting shot by more missiles, of course. This ramp gives you a lot of options of approach for this next section of the level. Multiple pathways is a classic staple in Sonic games. You could go down the ramp or jump on these rails that lead you to another set of options. Many decisions that you have to make quite quickly due to Sonic's insane speed. If you've been playing the game up to this point, you should be a bit used to this by now, although some sections of this level can kill you straight up if you're not careful. Or in the case of the sled, you might slip, slide, and fall off without too much control. Grinding on these rails also gives you a close view of these carnival aesthetics. And this then leads you to an hourglass where Sonic the Hedgehog switches to his werehog form. The werehog mechanic has always been a bit controversial, and is consistently agreed upon to be a lot less enjoyable and interesting than the daytime levels. But here, in this level, is where I think the werehog shines the most. Plus the repetitive battle theme doesn't play here, and block the level music for once. Yay! The best part about the werehog levels for me have always been the platforming aspect, using his long arms to swing and move around through spaces as opposed to the brawler, although I think that can be interesting too. However, Eggman Land puts heavy focus on the platformer, even just letting you skip enemies for the most part. In this first section of use, you quite literally just start swinging. There's a good mix going here, and some of the platforming sections can be quite tense, especially when you have to balance on these pipes. The camera and very subdued drop shadow can make things a bit difficult in certain parts. But if you are aware of these limits, then you can effectively adapt to them. The healthy balance between the daytime and nighttime sections is one of the best parts about the level. You don't stay in one form for too long, although the werehog sections will naturally last a bit longer given the slower gameplay. But Switching back and forth helps keep the level engaging and not too monotonous, something that arguably somewhat plagues the other Werehog Center levels. There is this constant sense of progression throughout as the layout and theme of each section shifts from transformation to transformation. The level is, however, consistent in that it does everything it can to take your life and laugh at you while doing it. In the end, Sonic survives through the onslaught of Eggman Land, not to mention destroying the Doctor's magnificent fighting machine and defeating Dark Gaia who had sent Eggman to the sky. Eggman Land is unfortunately no more. But does that mean that this creation was for nothing? No. Dr. Eggman succeeded. He brought about a revolutionary development from his dreams to fruition, creating one of the greatest cities the greatest levels, not just from a thematic standpoint, but also an ingenious creation mechanically. However, most importantly to keep in mind, Dr. Eggman's dream will rise again. This is a man who has no limits to his strength and fortitude. He will build this dream city once again, and at that future time, it will defeat Sonic and truly stand the test of time. And I can't wait to see it. Another attempt at the level I love so much. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed and would definitely appreciate it if you liked, commented, maybe subscribed. I really love this level, even if it can be a bit difficult to struggle through sometimes. Sonic in particular can be a bit slippy, but otherwise it honestly feels really good to play once you have a better idea of what you're doing. But maybe I'm just a masochist. Anyway, that's really all for me. See you in the behind the scenes and self-analysis, and I hope you look forward to the next project. Thank you.